Hey everybody, Adam at X-Laser here. Today we're going to give you a quick overview of the different parts of a laser light show projector and how they all work together in order to create these kinds of effects through the air or on a wall. At their core, laser light show projectors take one or more laser diodes and send that beam through some optical path to create a beam in the air or on the wall. A laser projector can be as simple as a laser beam and a diffraction grating, a piece of crystal, or even a mirror. Remember those spirograph sets you played with as a kid? You can even make your own laser projector based on the same principles using a few moving mirrors. When most people think of a laser light show today, they think of a scanning laser system producing beams in the air or images on the wall. These systems work by taking one or more laser beams, combining them, then routing that single beam into a set of mirrors. These mirrors are mounted on tiny, high-speed precision motors called galvanometers. These galvanometers move this single beam through space quickly enough that to the eye it looks like a solid line. Let's look at an example of a common laser light show projector. This section to the back is where all the control circuitry is located. These electronics do all kinds of things, from temperature control to power system monitoring, but their main function is to interpret the signal from your lighting console or computer into something the laser diodes and scanners can use to create patterns. This next section up front is where your laser diodes are. Frequently, these are combined in a single internal housing referred to commonly as a laser diode module. This projector has the most common configuration of red, green, and blue. These colors are combined through a special set of dichroic glass mirrors. These special mirrors allow some wavelengths of laser to pass through while others reflect, allowing us to combine multiple laser diodes into a single beam path. This single beam path then goes into a set of what most people in the industry call galvos, or a galvo set. Galvos are a set of galvanometer motors in a block with high efficiency mirrors mounted on their shafts. In this configuration, the laser beam hits the lower mirror first, which then controls the x-axis movement of the output. Then it bounces off of the top mirror, which controls the y-axis of the output. The driver for the galvos positions them very quickly and accurately, based on a control input from the controller. The industry standard is to control this position with a plus and minus 10 volt signal. At zero volts, the x-axis mirror is centered, but at negative 10 volts, it's at its extreme point to the left, and at positive 10 volts, the mirror is at its extreme point to the right. At zero volts, the y-axis mirror is centered, and at negative 10 volts, the mirror is at its extreme point to the bottom, and at positive 10 volts, the mirror is at its extreme point to the top. If we send the projector a signal of negative 10 volts x and negative 10 volts y, this puts our point in the bottom left. If we then change this to positive 10 volts x and positive 10 volts y, the galvos move this point to the top right of our scan field. Now that we understand what signal the galvos are looking for, we can feed them information a bit faster. What happens if we sweep our voltages through a range of values? Instead of jumping from negative 10 volts to positive 10 volts, maybe instead we use a sine wave to smoothly move through all the points in between. Here we have a sine wave on our x-axis, moving our point slowly from negative 5 volts to positive 5 volts. You can see the bottom mirror of the galvanometer is rotating on its axis in order to move the beam from left to right and back again. If we add a sine wave to the y-axis at the same time as a sine wave on the x-axis, but at a 90 degree offset, you can see that now we're moving the beam both up and down and left and right at the same time, which is making it draw a circle. This circle is being drawn at a rate of once per second, or one hertz. If we double our speed, so one half second per cycle or two hertz, you can see that the line is much longer. It's no longer just a single point. It looks almost like a complete circle. Here's what it looks like at one quarter of a second. And here it is again at one tenth of a second. Once we adjust to one hundredth of a second, you can see that the line appears completely solid, even though it is still just a single point moving through space just very rapidly. If we put a little bit of haze in the air, you can see that this is both solid on the wall and through the air. The exact same principles apply to color modulation. The most commonly used control signal for laser diode drivers is 0 to 5 volts per color, for 0 to 100% power for each color. 
If we have a red voltage of zero, a green voltage of five volts, and a blue voltage of zero volts, we get a bright green by itself. If we raise the level of our blue voltage to five volts, we now get a cyan from the green and the blue mixing. If we raise the red voltage to five volts, we get white. If we then drop the green voltage to zero so that we only have red and blue mixing, we get a magenta. Just like with Galvo signals, these color modulation signals can be done very quickly by the control system. When we generate these color signals by DMX or computer control, it allows us to change things very, very rapidly. So in this image, you see that we have blue on one side and green on the other side of a single line. One thing we can do is begin adding gradations in that so it slowly fades from the blue into the green. We can even just turn the colors on and off very rapidly in order to get these sort of linear band kind of effects that look really great through the air. So to create something really dynamic and visually interesting, we can combine all of these things. We can go ahead and just do our double sine wave that gives us that circle, and we can bring our red, green, and blue all the way up to full to just give us white. If we change the amplitude of those sine waves, we can change the size of the circle to be something smaller. We can take that very simple pattern and we can then duplicate it and offset it in order to create four independent circles from each other. We can then take those circles and move them around through space just by changing the offset of where the center point of each one of those circles is. This allows us to take a very simple set of input signals and allow us to do some really cool, complex, intricate through the air effects with that simple set of signals. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's given you a pretty good overview as to how laser light show projectors work. We've got our red, green, and blue color signals as well as our X and Y movement signals. These signals, when we combine them in different wavelengths and amplitudes, allow us to create all kinds of dynamic effects through the air and on the wall. If there's anything else you'd like to learn about how laser projectors work or how the variance process works, how individual technical elements like control systems work, just shoot us an email at info at x-laser.com or leave a note in the comments or hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks. See you next time.